This video is a remake of the original Bad Engineering number one. There were some things I left off or I tended to repeat myself, so I re I'm redoing this video. Make no mistake, these complaints also include other makes and models which have similar problems. So here we go. First is my Mustang skid loader. I show the back end with the door open. On the left side where the battery sits, well anyone that has tried to replace a battery understands that you cannot replace it without lifting it from the top which requires lifting the exhaust muffler, hence the uh, flexible exhaust pipe. How stupid is that? That my fellow is a very bad engineering mistake. The designer must have been an idiot, including everyone on his staff that approved of it. It was a nightmare for me until I decided one day to move the whole radiator one inch or so to the right. I drilled two new mounting holes and no more problems. I can now install most standard size batteries without difficulty. Yeah, sure, I understand the designer was trying to center the cooling system in line with the engine. However, many of today's vehicles show electrical fans offset and they still work just fine. The next thing you'll notice is I installed my own fuel inline strainer. Whenever you are dealing with construction or farm equipment, there will always be some smart ass kid that thinks it's funny to dump dirt in your fuel tank. There might also be some assholes you lent your machine to dumping in dirty fuel. This happened to me. Initially, the fuel was getting clogged at the 90 degree elbow fitting Mustang people used uh, located on top of the fuel tank. The quarter inch size elbow fitting fits inside the rubber tubing uh, made for an obstruction versus a straight through fuel line. I replaced it with a continuous run of tubing with no obstruction. Uh, an, external, an external type fitting would have also worked uh, just as well. Another problem I found with the tank is there's no way of uh, removing the tank since it's kind of molded in. That's pretty stupid engineering. If you can't remove the tank then at least provide a drain. And they didn't even do that. They, I had to siphon the fuel out. Not only wasn't there a drain, the fuel line going into the tank didn't even have a strainer on the end. Can you imagine that? The suction end should always have some kind of strainer. Next, I point out the most useless piece of shit installed on skid loaders, and these are the solenoid operated valves. Why? Because none were ever required before. Why are you installing them now? Why in hell would I need to lock the bucket using a solenoid, which might fail or the valve might leak, versus using a simple wedge or pole like we used to use to hold the bucket into position. The problem with the solenoid valves is that the idiot designer ran the wire co that controls them from front to back while using a series of switches to make it look sophisticated, I guess. These same wires also run under the seat, the safety belt, and sometimes a safety bar, all of which can cause a failure to the system. The switches alone are nothing more than $4 toggle switches, but the company charges you $50 each for this piece of crap. After months of having many breakdowns, I simply went directly to the solenoid valves and connected them directly to my 12 volt battery using the same switch I used to turn on the radiator fan. No more sudden stops or crashes. What you idiot engineers fail to understand is that these types of equipment often sit for months at a time. And whenever you have any kind of vehicle or equipment such as this, the electrical fastener connections tend to oxidize or corrode over time. Solenoid valves have their use and this was not one of them. As a fuel shut off to the engine, sure that's a good idea uh, in places where to use them. While I'm on the solenoid thingy, I also removed them from the parking brake system. An analog type one would have worked just fine. 
Many, if not all, operators use the bucket to stop any movement before they even remember what all those switches above are used for. Using a solenoid to park is stupid. For one, it keeps draining the battery. If someone is working and unaware that he has a weak battery or the generator isn't keeping it charged, will suddenly find he can't restart his equipment all because some solenoid robbed away what little charge he had left. I also show an image where I removed the relay to the parking solenoid since it too robs the battery of some charge. I had many occasions where I was working close to an edge or on a steep incline only to have the solenoid valve suddenly fail causing my machine to lock up. Hardwired it never happened again. The solenoids were not and are not a safety plus, only a pain in the ass. Next, let's talk about the awful T-handle design. The steering wheel in the middle makes it difficult to get in and out of the machine. Also, the stupid rubber plastic handle quickly became garbage. Left with uh, what was a short metal T-handle, I made my own out of pipe, some all thread, and a couple of nuts. Bad design once again by the manufacturer. Next, let's take a look at the jackass that designed the bucket pin with one thousandths clearance. What are you, a moron? When was the last time you worked in the field and had to replace such a pin? Those pins should have roughly five to ten thousand inch clearance. Not one. You're not designing an aircraft, stupid. No one should have to spend hours drilling them out or torching them to get them out. Also, the center pin for locking in the bucket is another stupid ass design. For one, you do not need a cam action locking lever and two, it should not be tapered pin, which makes it next to impossible to remove once it is rusted into place. About the only thing I find good about the loaders is the mounting of the hydraulic cylinders uh, in a horizontal position or tilted downward, all of which prevents water infiltration from morning mildew and rain. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you can. See us at www.larryandjane.com for more ideas and inventions. Thank you again.